Hello everybody and welcome to the channel. In today's video we're going to be checking out the newly released Cyber Factory Starstorm, also known as a masterpiece version of Transformers Bumblebee movie Starscream. Now for those of you looking to add this guy to your collection, he is currently available and in stock right now over at the Icon store and for that of course I shall pack a link down in the description box below and also be sure to use the discount code Prime vs Prime to get a discount across the entire site. Now Starscream here has been a figure that I've been super excited for. We've gotten so many Bumblebee movie themed third party figures this year but no Starscream this is in fact one of the first third party star screams that we've gotten from that movie so far and I've got to say that Cyber Factory certainly have set the bar. This guy is awesome and it's all mainly down to the simple fact that Starscream looked killer in his very brief cameo in that B movie so here's hoping in the upcoming Rise of the Beasts movie we can in fact once again see this awesome design actually on the silver screen but taking a closer look here at the details you can see that in regards to a face sculpt this looks astonishing exactly how we in fact actually saw it in that very brief Cybertronian flashback sequence you can see the attention to detail to the mouth looks super super awesome we've got a really nice metallic silver there used for the mouthpiece as well as some really nice silver dry brushing in order to pick out some of the sharper details of the sculpt as well as of course in order to actually give you the impression that this version of Starscream is battle worn you can see as we turn our attention here to the side of Starscream's head it is comprised out of two components so we've got this darker black as well as this red section once again incredibly influenced by his G1 design which I know made many collectors myself included happy as of course the Dorito S Starscream that we got from the Michael Bay movies definitely wasn't to everybody's preference but you can see how we've got the intakes here at the top sculpted and painted beautifully you'll notice throughout this figure that he has in fact been given this darker wash just to really once again make him look battered and worn as we turn our attention here to the cockpit once again super accurate to what we actually saw in the movie we've got these struts that do in fact actually attach onto the sides which I guess could almost act as hydraulics these look super super impressive as we take a look towards the side of the torso you can once again see some of the intake detailing which looks exceptional and then as we just take a look at the actual wings of Starscream. This is awesome. I'm so pleased to actually see these turn out as well as they have. You can once again see that classic G1 stripe Starscream design, but we've got some really nice pointed daggers, which I would definitely actually take caution of when holding the figure, and you can see the null rays there stored on the side, of which have also been sculpted and painted impeccably well, and of course we've got the tips of the wings there, once again sporting that G1-esque stripe design. And then as we just spin our attention here to the back, you'll notice that there is next to no jet kibble. Honestly, Cyber Factory have done an outstanding job with this figure, and you you can see how the entire wing design is incredibly cohesive there are barely any gaps in these at all which once again looks absolutely fantastic and the actual back piece itself is super smooth once again to match the CGI design now as we just flip here to the front once more the color palette on this guy really pops so we've got the predominantly red and gray color scheme with a few subtle highlights here of blue for the forearms once again harkening back to that G1 design and the mechanical detailing on this really does look awesome once again you can see that dry brushing effect applied over the top but we've got some really nice circuitry detailing going on and and then as we just work our way down to the lower section, of course, we've got some design cues of which are very similar to the Transformers Bumblebee Blitzwing. And I know that is a topic of controversy, but I actually thought there were enough differences between Starscream and Blitzwing to really differentiate them, especially in regards to the head design. But you can see as we just work our way down to the legs, really nice looking blue detailing going on for the shin pads. Once again, you can see some of that battle damage paint app. And even as we turn here to the interior of the leg, this has been sculpted and painted exceptionally well. As so as the outer section, we've even actually got the afterburner here on the side, which looks fantastic and then as we just turn our attention once more to the back you can see completely sculpted as well as painted and the foot design looks tremendous once again incredibly accurate to what we actually saw in the movie so overall Cyber Factory have absolutely knocked it out of the park in terms of the design and actually capturing this guy's appearance from the B movie they've done a stellar job now as we get down to articulation this was also an area of which surprised me so here for the head this can look up to a fantastic degree you can see that is an exceptional range of motion as well as can look down not to the best degree sadly it would have been awesome if we could have got him looking slightly further down but it can of course tilt side to side so you are able to get some incredibly expressive poses out of this version of Starscream as well as of course left to right the shoulder pads are on their own independent hinge joints so we'll manipulate out of the way if you wish them to although do in fact actually move really nicely here with the main shoulder joints so this can hinge roughly to 90 we of course do get a full range of motion here at the shoulder rotation at the lower section of the bicep a die cast joint here which is in fact double jointed allowing for a terrific degree of motion here at the elbow we do in fact get a wrist rotation the thumb is on its own independent ball joint and the fingers here are in fact held together via this pin but the index finger is individual and you can see how we've also got a hinge joint at the knuckle so that once again is pretty decent the waist articulation just due to the nature of the design is slightly compromised and if you do push it too much to the left or to the right it would in fact actually detach the transformation joint but you can see that's still a pretty decent range of motion going left to right the legs are on ratchet joints so these can kick forward i'd say roughly there to 90 so not the best range but definitely not the worst but these can of course also kick 
to the back but once again are slightly restricted due to some of these torso panels they can also ratchet out to the sides i would say they could probably go to 90 but i just don't want to force it in case i actually scratch some of the paint going on there and we also do get a rotation here at the upper thigh due to transformation we get a double joint here at the knee which can kick way past 90 so that too is fantastic and then finally for the foot not only can this swivel side to side but it can also pivot up and down which once again is awesome to get this guy into some of those more expressive poses so overall starscream articulates and looks absolutely fantastic here for robot mode but he's definitely not without his flaws so for example i do sadly have an incredibly loose joint going on here for this lower hinge joint which actually holds the forearm into place making it near enough impossible to in fact actually get him to hold the blaster without this drooping all the time and considering this is on a pin joint there is literally no way that i believe i can in fact stiffen that up especially as this too is also a die cast component so would have been nice to have seen maybe some ratchet joints going on here for the elbows but other than that all of the joints appear to be holding up incredibly well and as we take a look here towards the torso you can see we've got a few various different gaps but due to the darker paint actually inside it definitely doesn't detract from the overall look in my opinion so really really looking fantastic now as we get down to some of the features as well as accessories that this guy comes with as per tradition it would seem with these more mpm style third party figures starscream here possesses a light up eye feature so in order to actually get to this you just push this switch here at the top which will illuminate the eyes and honestly if the face didn't look incredible already it looks absolutely outstanding now you can see how that truly brings this guy to life and i'll be sure to actually post a screen cap of starscream from the b movie and i'm sure you guys will all agree with me in saying that this looks almost exactly how he appeared in the film honestly that looks fantastic now there is some slight white bleeding going around the eyes but honestly that's just a minor critique and he does also in fact actually include a visor accessory now this has just been cast out of a transparent piece of red plastic you can see how it's sculpted to actually fit over the eyes as well as the nose and as i just very quickly showcase on how to attach this it simply does just groove into the eyes just like so and there you've got B-Movie Starscream with that visor going on. And once again, that looks really, really awesome. A very different look for the character and a look that I don't actually believe we see in the B-Movie. But once again, that looks fantastic. Now, in terms of firepower, besides the two null rays, which are unfortunately actually fixed into place, this version of Starscream includes one Cybertronian blaster or rifle, or it almost looks like a shotgun, to be honest. This, much like the figure, has been painted really nicely, so you can see some dry brushing going along the top just to make it look as if, though, it is, in fact, actually metal in material. And you can see some nice red details just to pick out some of the sharp details of the sculpt we've got the barrel there at the front now this too much like the forearm doesn't actually hold into the handle that well so you can see the actual ports are rather shallow and they're not a complete square meaning that the actual grip really is quite loose on this piece so if i just very quickly demonstrate that it's supposed to just hold in there and then you would wrap the fingers around but it really doesn't take much to knock it out of course considering i'm actually reviewing now it is holding in perfectly but still nice looking weapon and you can in fact actually get this guy into some pretty awesome poses of which i hopefully will be able to showcase case towards the beginning of this review and a weapon of which looks very similar to the actual blaster that Blitzwing came with you can see how we've got this arm piece which appears to in fact actually be a transformed element so you can see how we've got this blue section at the top two missiles here on the sides as well as the main null ray cannon and the sculpt work on this once again looks fantastic as so does the paint but sadly it doesn't really lock into the forearm all that well now there is no right or wrong way that I at least have found in order to actually install it so what I like to do is just compress the thumb and the fingers here over the top just like so and essentially you do just slide this over now there are no grooves or tabs to in fact actually lock this into place so it really does just rest into place and if you do push it all the way it will actually stay in there pretty securely but as you begin to bend the elbow it really doesn't take much to in fact disengage this and you can of course actually rotate it to the side if you wanted to so that too Here's a pretty decent look, and once again, Starscream really does look awesome whilst wielding that. So with Robot Mode just about wrapped up, let's bring in some comparisons, and then of course we'll proceed to Transformation, which leads to the Cybertronian Tetrajet Alt Mode. So first up for comparison, we've got the Cyber Factory Starscream on the left, and the Mechanical Alliance Soundwave there on the right. And not only do these guys look fantastic when actually posed next to one another, but I think the scale is pretty accurate, especially if you were going by some of the scale charts which were actually released by Paramount. So I have no issue in actually fitting this guy in with my MPM Star with figures and for another more official comparison here we have Starstorm compared next to the official 3-0 DLX Optimus Prime and once again I think he scales really nicely with this guy so maybe if you just want a 3-0 Bumblebee movie DLX Starscream to in fact actually stand in your collection I think he'll work really really well and finally here we have Starstorm compared next to the Transcraft Beetle also known of course as an MPM style version of Bumblebee and I think the scale once more works really nicely this was definitely more or less the scale we saw between Blitzwing and B and considering Starscream shares an incredibly similar design to Blitzwing 
it would once again stand to reason that B would be this much smaller when in comparison to this guy. And I just think they look fantastic next to each other. Of course, if you're building that Bumblebee movie masterpiece display, I think this Star Storm here will look absolutely fantastic amongst some of the characters that I've showcased in these comparisons. So turning to Starscream's transformation, quite honestly, nowhere near as complex as we first imagined, despite this guy looking awesome. He's actually relatively simple. So to begin with, you are going to want to collapse the thumbs here along the side of the hand and of course repeat the same process we can then come here to these shoulder sections just take these and hinge them out to the sides rotate down and then you are in fact actually going to want to compress them along the side like so of course come to this side and repeat the same process so extend those out and then once more collapse them on that double hinge joint we can then spin our attention here to the back of Starscream and in fact actually disengage this wing lift this slightly up which will then allow you to take the null ray and in fact actually swing this around and then just attach that snap that into place take this section and just hinge this down once more. Of course, being cautious of some of these spikes that we've got going on, as not only may they break, but of course you don't want to, in fact, actually pierce your skin. We're then going to want to come here to this side, and of course, take this, fold this section in, snap that there into place, and just compress that wing like so. We can take this center section here, and fold these two halves until they clip into place. Spin your attention here to the front now, and take these panels, just snap them out to the sides, and of course, repeat the same process here. Snap that out to the sides. Take these pieces and flip those forwards. And to be fair, you can in fact actually flip these forwards for bot mode if you wanted to. However, I have just showcased the official conversion with these black thrusters sticking out. So just inch that forwards like so. What we can then do is come here to the torso and essentially take this plate here, pull this forwards, which will then disengage and unlock the entire torso. So once that's completed, what we can then do is arch this here all the way backwards. And I will in fact actually lower the camera down so you guys can gather a better perspective. You can see here we have actual footage of Starscream after he's had one too many when going out with Megatron. But in order to actually showcase the conversion here, you are going to want to bring this section forwards, flip the nose cone forwards until that tabs into place. And then here you can see a tiny tab that should in fact actually peg into that slot. So just recess this here until that there does snap very securely into place. We can then come here to the biceps, hinge on that double elbow and then rotate at the bicep so that we're left with something that looks along the lines of this and of course repeat the same process for this side so just hinge that and rotate there along the side what we can then do is actually take this here and just pull these panels out to the sides we can take this hinge this inwards and now Starscream's head will in fact actually sit along the base of this spine piece now once that's completed we can then just straighten all of this out and in fact actually hinge this all the way to the back and it will snap into place just like so. We can then come here to these intakes and these will just hinge out to the sides and of course come to this side and repeat the same process and then with these pieces here you are in fact actually going to want to fill this section in just like so. So we're left with something that looks along the lines of this and of course repeat the same process here for this side and then hinge this section up as these pieces here are in fact actually going to rotate inside just like so. So just hinge all of that in, bring these forearms closer to the middle. Now you could in fact actually overlap these panels here on top of the wrists. I shan't be doing that just yet as there is a later stepping conversion where you will essentially have to completely explode this region. So for now we'll just postpone that. We can take these wings, rotate these sections here around just like this and come to this side and repeat the same process so rotate that out what we can then do is take this red section and split it from this darker gunmetal piece and essentially just extend all of that come to this side and repeat the same process so just extend all of that we can then take this gray panel flip this here forwards just like so and of course come to this side and repeat the same process so split that forwards Turn your attention here to the back of Starscream and just extend these panels out to allow for some clearance to in fact actually rotate this halfway as what we can then do is lift this section of the cockpit forwards and actually secure that there into place. I would then recommend flattening this as we will more than likely actually flip him on his back throughout this review and you of course don't want to chip nor in fact actually cause any damage to this. So now what we can do is come here to this section and you can see how we've got a gray tab there that will in fact peg here into this slot. So align that up appropriately. 
and just snap that there into place. And of course, come to this side. So just snap that there into place. Once that's completed, we can now proceed to in fact actually bring the forearms in closer to the body. Take these panels here and essentially just rest them there over the top so that we're left with something that looks along the lines of this and that is essentially the entire upper section of the jet fully transformed this is where we can now turn our attention here to starscream's legs so you're going to want to rotate here at the waist 180 so that the back is now facing the front we can take these panels just disengage those and bring that there out to the side you're then going to want to rotate so that the foot is now facing inwards hinge this section down and then take this piece where this die cast component is situated and fold this section out revealing a thruster and then this will tuck away in there like so and you can see how we've got this tab that would in fact peg into the sole of Starscream's foot so just bend here at this die cast piece snap that there into place come to this side and repeat the same process so fold this section out rotate the foot take this section here hinge that forwards compress that in bend slightly here at the knee joint just to actually prevent the robot mode attachment which is this piece becoming attached here to this circular section so once that's done we can then just snap that there into place and now what you're going to want to do here is fold this knee in so that this tab now pegs here into this slot so bring that over the top snap that into place of course come here to this side and repeat the same process so snap that into place and then you're going to want to rotate the legs here all the way around so that we are now left with something that looks along the lines of this now we can flip once more here to the top and you're essentially just going to want to compress these legs in to this hollow space now you can also see here how we've got some tabs these are going to peg into these slots here so just align this section here up until that there does tab into place spin your attention here to the back to this side and repeat the same process so snap that in there you can see how that will secure really nicely and just ensure that the other side is doing the same we can then take this piece rotate this to the side angle these wings appropriately come here now to the underside of starscream just make sure those hands stay tabbed in take these sections here and these will in fact actually slide into this gap and of course repeat the same process take these panels and just snap them there nice and securely and we can in fact now actually bring in the shotgun that we saw earlier on in the review and this slot will in fact actually grasp around this cutout that we've got going on here so just shoot that section in there peg that into place and with all that being said here we have the cybertronian version of starscream fully transformed up into his pretty awesome pretty accurate looking tetrajet alt mode now i'm completely aware that this particular alt mode for starscream is very abstract it's very different when in comparison to anything that we've previously seen from the live action movies although if you actually check out the concept art both the studio series version and now this version by cyber factory do a really really nice job in capturing its appearance from the movie now also included is in fact this black flight stand you can use this here for both both the jet mode as well as the robot mode and it does come with a different attachment for when you actually get it in robot mode i think this is super handy especially due to the abstract nature of the design you don't want to put too much pressure on the wings and unlike the studio series version the gun doesn't in fact actually act as a tripod so if you were to just place this on the ground without the display base quite honestly you could in fact actually put unnecessary pressure on those wings as I just very quickly reattach this. You can see the overall design is vaguely similar to what we actually saw from the original G1 cartoon series, of course, when the actual Seekers are on Cybertron, this time, of course, just in a live action movie format. And I think the paintwork, once again, looks super, super impressive, as so does the overall design. This really does look as if though it's jumped straight out of the film. You can see we've got a nice copper paint going on for the cockpit. We've got some nice details for the nose cone. We've got that Cybertronian shotgun situated on the underside, which also looks really cool, as well as those null rays. You can once again see some really nice g1 cues such as the stripes that we've got going on here for the wings i think the color looks really awesome and then as we just flip here to the back you can see we've got various different thrusters so these ones which 
actually created from the toes and then these ones of which are actually inside Starscream's legs which is super awesome. An area which I'm rather confused about is this piece in robot mode this doesn't clip into anything and here for the jet mode it also doesn't clip into anything so maybe they did in fact actually plan to have this attached to an almost cover that would just tidy this component up. Honestly I don't have any idea but it is a rather unusual thing just to have dangling there but you can see here from a side perspective definitely looks pretty accurate to what we saw going on in the movie. Now if we actually bring in the cannon that we saw in bot mode there is in fact a way of which you can just peg this here over the top. To be quite honest once again it doesn't really stay in there all that securely which is unfortunate. I do believe that it is essentially just supposed to sort of rest into place like so but you can see how it is slightly droopy you can't in fact actually get it situated where it looks as if though it's firing straight so this is something that I do just more than likely tend to set off to the side but once again definitely a nice alt mode and once more for those of you who aren't all that keen on this particular mode it is accurate to the movie so I can't really fault Cyber Factory all that much at all I think they've done for the most part a pretty decent job and transformation isn't actually a nightmare going to this mode and of course going back so really nice looking jet mode of course to accompany a very very awesome looking robot mode. So some final thoughts here for this Cyber Factory Starstorm also known as an MPM version of Bumblebee movie Starscream overall for the most part I actually really love the way this guys turned out. In terms of robot mode, I think it's awesome. It looks incredibly accurate to that very brief cameo that Starscream actually had from the Bumblebee movie. I think they've captured his likeness perfectly and the design in itself is awesome. It's the design that I really hope we can in fact actually see taken forward in the live action movies as it is just literally Starscream down to a T. I think Cyber Factory have perfectly captured the colour palette of this guy. The blue really pops on the forearms but then once again I love that dry brushing effect that we've got throughout the figure just to give you that battered and worn effect. The face sculpt is by far one of my favourite parts of this figure. The attention to detail is just amazing and when you actually apply the visor as well as actually flick on the LED function it looks supreme. We also do get some pretty cool accessories whilst sadly he can't hold them all that well. I still do think that if you are able to get him into poses with them they look fantastic. The paintwork and sculpt work on those two is excellent and the articulation once again is pretty decent. I really would have loved to have seen them actually incorporate ratchet joints into the elbows but that's just a minor critique. I'm pretty certain that nine times out of ten your copy should come with solid joints unless it is an issue which plagues all of these of which I'm not actually aware of when filming this review, but be sure to let me know down in the comment section below. And then we get down to transformation for a third party figure of which is in the masterpiece scale. It's actually fairly simplistic and it results in a pretty accurate looking Cybertronian Tetrajet alt mode. Of course, a mode that I know not everybody out there is 100% keen on, but this was the mode that he sports in the film. So once again, you can't really complain all that much. And I think it certainly does a really good job in accommodating that fantastic looking robot mode. And the display base too is a really, really nice touch. So with all that being said, if you are after adding Cyber Factory Starscream to your collection, he is currently available and in stock right now over at the Icon Store. And for that, of course, I shall pack a link down in the description box below. I would love to know down in the comment section below on what you guys think of this particular figure. Is it one that you shall be adding to your collection? Or are you, in fact, actually going to be waiting to see as to whether or not any other third party companies do approach this guy? I do believe there are, in fact, some rumors that 3.0 may, in fact, be coming out with their version of this guy, of course, in the DLX scale. But up until this point, nothing has been officially confirmed. I'd also love to know down in the comments on what you thought of the review and until my next review i'll see you then thanks for watching